for Photo Tuts. Uh, my name is Simon Plant and I'll be with you for the next 20 minutes or so um, presenting this uh, video tutorial. Well, and this is the image uh, that we're going to look at today. We're going to produce a really nice high key uh, portrait of this guy and we're going to really accentuate his, uh, his uh, very charismatic, charismatic, I should say, face and bring out all the textures uh, in that. So probably not going to be the most flattering uh, of techniques and I certainly wouldn't advise using it on your grandma but um, it's great for these kind of character type uh, portraits. This guy, um, I was uh, wandering around uh, the island of Kos uh, in Greece and um, I had with me, I've got, I've got a 1DS Mark II Canon which is a, a huge, heavy, great big uh, monster of a camera, fantastic quality uh, images, uh, it's a 16.7 megapixel camera, um, but occasionally I prefer to take out my 400D, uh, this one was actually shot on a 20D which is a very similar camera, it's uh, an APS size uh, sensor, um, but they're great because the, as I said they're very light they've got little pop-up flashes um, which are nice but like in this image just for banging a little bit of flash into the picture and um, they're just generally less less hard work to lug around especially in the heat um, this guy was called George he's I think he was eight, about 85 years old and I was wandering around the um, the castle of uh, the Knights of St John on the island of Kos and he was um, a tour guide and um, I was naturally drawn to him he was very uh, kind of uh, loudly dressed and um, he just had a great face and I just started chatting to him about uh, various history of the place and just general things and he was a very very interesting guy and um, eventually I, I, I kindly asked him if I could uh, take his portrait which he uh, graciously allowed me to do and this was the resulting image um, I shot this um, on a 15 to 30 mil lens which is uh, equivalent to about 24 to 48 on a full frame sensor so this was shot on the equivalent to about 48 millimeters um, I would have preferred um, if I'd had my other lens uh, on the camera which I didn't and we were a bit pushed for time I would have changed my lens and put uh, maybe a 90 uh, 90 millimeter on there uh, and come in a little bit closer but um, I had to make do what I got um, but this is the resulting image um, we banged a little bit of flash uh, into uh, into him as well as you can see the catch lights uh, in the uh, eyes there and um, the the actual lighting for this was obviously available light uh, it was a very very bright sunny Mediterranean type day and uh, he was sat in a shade and uh, lots of marble um, in the background and on the floor reflecting light back in so it was a really nice flatly uh, flat lit image and uh, that's really helpful if you want to try and do any of this high key type images it helps to have nice even diffuse lighting on the subject it doesn't really work when you've got bright sunlight uh, you know, drapes and across uh, people's faces uh, etc so you certainly want them in a nice evenly lit uh, uh, area so um, let's move on and we'll start showing you through some of the uh, adjustments uh, for this particular image so I'm working in uh, Adobe Photoshop CS3 and we're in uh, obviously Camera Raw the, on the bridge at the moment and uh, what we want to do is really just um, brighten this image and um, we don't want to start clipping any highlights or anything but uh, we want to try and get it in a ballpark uh, of what I'm looking for, I don't want to do my final adjustments in Camera Raw. I normally take my images into Photoshop slightly flat, um, so I want to leave a little bit of headroom for further adjustments within Photoshop. But we want to get it processed as far as we can uh, in Camera Raw. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, we'll hold down the Alt key and I want to just uh, drag the exposure slider up until we start seeing a little bit of clipping in the highlights, and there we go that's a, bit, a little bit too fast we just drag it back now and obviously by holding the alt key down we get a nice preview of what's going on and as I said I don't want to be clipping anything so let's leave it about there um, recovery we won't need to worry about that I don't think there's nothing really to recover because we've not overexposed anything um, brightness we could have a little play with that as I said don't want to take it into Photoshop too bright I just want to leave a little bit more room for adjustments uh, contrast we can bring the contrast up a little bit but again don't get too far 
somewhere around there. Clarity, I want to pump this up quite a way. Uh, Clarity is like um, like a micro contrast uh, adjustment, and um, that's really what we want. We want nice lots of uh, textures to be brought out within the skin here, and already by just sliding this Clarity slider like so, you can see that's having quite an effect on the gentleman's face there. Again, where I would do it, so we do, we're also going to bring out um, all the textures in uh, uh, George's uh, rather loud zoot suit and uh, his uh, stripy shirt here and that is going to cause quite a lot of uh, distraction when we view the image uh, and we don't want that, we want to maintain the uh, attention on his face here uh, and not his uh, rather loud and slightly dirty I have to say uh, suit. So. Keep an eye on that, we've got to think about all these other areas, so I'm just going to bring the clarity up uh, probably to about there, about 50 I think, I don't want to go any further than that. Uh, vibrance, uh, I'm going to leave that, um, again it's probably going to be quite desaturated this, but we'll leave it, we'll leave it about 25 there, saturation, we'll bring it up a little bit, we can always knock it back down again. Um, next. Uh, thing is um, here, uh, sharpening, I don't play any sharpening in uh, Camera Raw, um, only for the preview. Uh, noise reduction, uh, we'll bring that up a little bit to so about 5, uh, there may well be, I shot this on I think about 100 ISO, so there shouldn't be a lot of noise, but being on an APS size sensor, I'm not used to always working on many images from, from that, and it will have a little bit more noise than I'm used to, so we'll bring that in a little bit. Um, Next thing, right, the hue and saturations. We can have a little play around with this. I want to uh, perhaps adjust the skin tones a little bit. So we'll get the hue for the reds. And again, there's no direct settings for this. We're just going to have a little play around. If we bring it too far, you can see his nose is uh, rather blossomed. So we've uh, got to keep an eye on that. So we don't want to go too mad with these color settings, um, hue settings for the colors. Uh, we just want to get a nice skin tone. Um, now, I want to keep him quite nice and warm and weathered um, because he is a, a native to uh, Greece and uh, in the sun a lot, lucky fellow. Uh, we don't get much sun in England, as you probably already know. Um, so, again, with the yellows, just have a little play around. That's going a bit too far. So around there looks good. Um, that's all we need to worry about there. Um, saturation. Um, you can have a little play around with that. Again, I don't want it uh, going too mad. So what I'm saying is basically is go in and just have a bit of play with the images with these settings and make sure you don't go too mad unless you want something really wacky. Uh, luminance, again, we don't need to worry about that. Next one is um, split toning and shadow, don't need to worry about that. Uh, lens correction, I'll correct all edges. Uh, what one about lens vignetting here. And that's about it. So once you've done that, just click done. Right, our image is now open in Photoshop. We're going to start by duplicating the background layer, right clicking and convert to smart object. Um, with a lot of these settings uh, in a lot of my images anyway, and I'm sure other people are not different, um, we tend to have to come back and readjust certain settings as we progress to the image. So you need to leave yourself plenty of opportunity and flexibility to do that. Um, now if that's converted to a smart object, I'll rename it first of all. Um, if I can do that, um, shadow highlight, and um, I want to add a, a layer mask eventually. But what we'll do, we we'll just go uh, go into the adjustment, go to image adjustments, shadow highlight, and eventually what I'm going to do in a minute is make a mask. So this is just going to affect his face. So don't worry about the rest of the the jacket and the shirt and the background. So what I want to do is just start bringing up some textures in George's face. So first of all we're going to go to shadows. I'm going to drop the shadow adjustment down slightly and bring up the tonal width and have a look at what that does. And we can bring that down here now to about 20. And radius again, just have a little play around with the settings there, see what works best. Doesn't seem to be making a lot of difference, so we'll leave that as it is. Highlights again, um, don't want it to go too dark. 
so we'll leave his face for about 13 40 percent um tonal width around there looks good around 36 percent radius again have a little play that looks good about 70 pixels uh adjustments mid-tone contrast again don't worry about the suit this is my, like a, a micro, like a micro contrast again in some respects and I'm just looking at the textures in his face so there looks good I'm not sure color correction is going to make a lot of difference but we'll leave it about 20% click OK just wait back the process okay that's before that's after as you can see it's made quite a bit of difference to his uh, skin area here we're going to add a layer mask fill that with black and then what I want to do is go in and just make a mask for his face so let's find my zoom tool let's just go in a bit or you can paint directly onto the layer so let's let's do that let's get a brush foreground set to white to make sure that the mask is highlighted and just bring down the brush size and we're just going to paint in the adjustment that we've just made around his face I'll just go around the edges first to get a nice outline you can obviously do this with a selection tool which is probably some ways easier but this is just another way of doing it uh, then we can alt click on the mask and then we can see where the outline of George's face is we can now get a selection tool go around there and just fill that with white command D to deselect alt click on the mask again and now we can see some of that texture coming through from our adjustments we could now go and try another blending mode say overlay which is far too much or oh, soft light soft light looks good again don't worry about the color at the moment we can fix that but uh, it's certainly bringing out some of those lovely textures in his face what we do is alt click on the mask again like so and we want to just blur this we've got a few little harsh edges there so we go to filter blur Gaussian blur and we just want to add enough uh, Gaussian blur just to uh, get rid of these lines these brush lines here so somewhere around 25 pixels looks like it will do the job like so I'll click on the mask again and uh, that's just giving us a better blend for our mask um, right let's close those up uh, I now want to just drop some of the color from this image so I'm going to go to cur uh, go to the adjustment layers and go to black and white and uh, I want again I want a filter uh, which will give plenty of texture on his skin so normally blue is quite good that might be a little bit too much but uh, we could always drop back the opacity uh, let's have a look, look at uh, the high contrast blue that's even worse red he's going to be lightening too much infrared no he looks very strange there so let's go for the uh, blue filter click OK and we can just drop the opacity on this somewhat and that is bringing out quite a bit more texture in his face and also dropping the colour down quite a bit I don't dislike that like so I'm now going to adjust the colour a little bit more I'm going to add a hue saturation adjustment um, I'm going to click the colorize box. I'm going to drop this round to around 25 to give us some warmth and uh, just have a play around with this slider tool. Around 15. Click OK. I can now fill this with black to take the adjustment away. Um, and I'm going to go back to our shadow highlight mask here. Command or Control click on the mask to load our selection back to the hue saturation layer and we're going to fill that now with white like so now press command or control D to deselect that and uh, what I want to do is um, just fine tune this by dropping the opacity down a bit 
like so. So there's before, there's after. Um, not a massive adjustment, but uh, just a slight warming and giving him a bit more weathered look. Uh, to his skin and that's kind of how I remembered him um, so uh, that's my interpretation to further add to that weathered look I'm going to now make a, a new adjustment a new layer from the top here and uh, we're going to call this one D um, B which stands for dodge and burn the mode needs to go into overlay and we need to tick this box here, fill with overlay neutral colour at 50%. And what we're going to do on this layer is to literally do what I just said, which is to dodge and burn, which is uh, very similar to the traditional darkroom dodging and burning we used to do back in the day in the darkroom. And we do that with the um, the dodge and burn tool, funny enough. Um, now, we've got to be uh, very careful with these not to go over the top with them. So we're going to clip the um, burn tool first of all and um, we're going to put the range to shadows and exposure we want to drop the exposure down to probably about 12 percent somewhere around there 12 13 percent like so and then we're going to literally get uh, our tool and just go over some of these lines in George's uh, face now again, um, you don't want to be doing this on your uh, auntie's portrait because it's not uh, the most flattering of uh, effects. But it does bring out some uh, some of these textures in the wrinkles here of the face, and that's what I want to try and keep keep those lovely uh, laughter lines, as we call them. I and mean, you're probably thinking there's not much going on at the moment, but if I turn this off now. And back on, you can see we've made quite a bit of difference already. So again, you don't want to go over the top with the exposure. Just keep the exposure down quite low. Change over to the dodge tool. Again, this time, range the highlights and just drop the exposure down again. About 11, 12% somewhere low around there. And just go over some of these highlights now. On the nose. Around the eyes like so. We keep building that up gently like so. So uh, that's how far we are at the moment. We don't want to go too too mad otherwise it's going to look very strange but I'll carry on with that I'll come back in a second. Right so I've uh, carried on with that a little bit more and this is the before this is after so I think you agree it's made quite a difference and as I said, you've got to hold back a little bit. You don't want it going too over the top because it's going to look a bit strange in the context of the whole image. Uh, but I think that works okay. So that's another little bit uh, finished. Right, we're coming to the uh, end of this uh, tutorial now. So what I'm going to do is just select all of these layers and make sure they're all linked together. Uh, that makes sure that they don't go walk about. So if we knock anything, I'm going to add a new layer group and just drag all these into there, of these ones anyway, not the background, and we'll just rename that one uh, adjustments, and that that way we're nice and tidy. You can uh, obviously see where we are. So this is the stage at the moment. There's before, there's after. So quite a big difference there. Um, what I'm going to do now is to make uh, an empty layer hold down the alt key and we want to go to layers uh, here layers palette go to merge visible but we hold down the alt key when we do that and what that does is uh, it will combine all these visible uh, adjustments and layers here into a single layer and uh, we can actually turn these off now if we wanted to so that's combine those so we we'll call this one uh, stamp and I'm gonna go to filter other and high pass and now we've got the high pass uh, preview come up I would recommend a fairly low radius if you go too high I don't think we're going to get uh, enough sharpening happening so uh, no hard and fast rules but have a little play of the slider um, I'm going to use a setting of about five and a half pixels for this image click OK um, now we're going to change the blend mode to uh, soft light okay there's before there's after I'm um, just zoom in so you can see that a little bit better before 
after, so that's quite uh, nicely sharpened that image up. We're just going to run that filter again, get a filter, high pass, and that will rerun the last settings, like so. I can now duplicate this sharpening layer and add a, a layer mask. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'll just fill that with black. That's the quickest way of doing it. And that just takes away that sharpening. Um, I'm going to load the uh, face selection from the, one of the masks that we did earlier by command or control clicking on it. And it'll just zoom back out again. And now, with our uh, copy of our sharpening layer active, we can fill that with white and that will just add a little bit more sharpening just to Georgie's face. So we've done a global sharpen. In fact, we'll rename this one now uh, Global Sharpen. And this one we'll call um, Face Sharpen. It's a good idea to obviously um, make sure you name all your layers so you know where you are. Again, I'm just going to link these together so they don't move. So that's the one with just the face. Now that might be a little bit OTT, but we can always obviously now drop the opacity of that a little bit if we feel it's too much. So let's just have a look. So there's before, there's after on the sharpening. I think you can see that there. And that just sharpens the whole image quite nicely. And then we've done a little bit extra sharpening just on George's face, like so. If we wanted to, what the other thing we could do, we just delete this layer mask. We could add a layer mask here again, make sure it's uh, filled with uh, black, so it's taking the adjustment away. If we wanted to, if we wanted a bit more precise sharpening, we could just go in and paint on the mask with white, and that would just give us a sharpening just where we want it, and that's another way of doing it. So we just pick out the eyes and the eyebrows here, and that will help drag the viewer's eye, uh, attention to those areas that bit more. I actually want to put quite a bit of shot all over this, so uh, I'll probably revert that in a second to where we were. And that is uh, pretty much near enough finished. One last thing I've done is just to add a, a layer group to the sharpening uh, layers we've just done, so they're nice and tidy. And to finish off, I've, I've added a levels adjustment layer on top of the stack here. And the reason I do that is I like to hold down the Alt key and just check that nothing's blowing out or clipping. So if you hold down the Alt key and just click on the highlights here, you can see if anything's going clipping out to pure white. So we can just, I want this fairly high key, so we can bring it up a little bit. You want a little bit coming through, so you get some nice uh, clean highlights. But we don't want it going pure white and uh, looking overexposed. Same for the shadow end. I don't really want any heavy shadows in this, particularly. So that's fine as it is. So that just assures you're not uh, clipping or blocking up the shadows. So there's before. There's after. My very final act is to save this as a PSD file, uh, which I've just done, and now I'm going to flatten it and then crop it. So that's now flattened. I'm going to get my crop tool, and I think this bit of space at the top here is really just wasted, so I'm going to crop him a little bit tighter, probably a little bit there. That should do us, and that just gives us a just nicer composition uh, for the image. So there we have it. There's George. If you uh, if you find yourself travelling around the islands of Greece and you get a cost and you happen to go into the uh, the castle there, uh, keep an eye out for George. I'm, I'm not sure if he's still about. He was obviously knocking on a little bit, but uh, obviously in very good health. Um, and uh, you might just see him uh, giving somebody a guided tour. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.